Welcome to the New Trust Economy, where your hosts, Blockchain 101 author and founder of Rise Housing, Monica Profit, and Inc. innovation columnist and brand casting strategist, Tracy Hazard, explore all things blockchain, ICO ventures, and cryptocurrency. Each week, they explore businesses, applications, and venture built on blockchain or cryptocurrency and address issues like women and diversity in tech, trust and distrust, and the economics of access and value. We would like to remind our listeners that investing in disruptive tech, ICOs, and cryptocurrency is speculative in nature and involves substantial risk of loss. We encourage you to invest carefully and do your due diligence first. Now, here are your hosts, Monica Profit and Tracy Hazard. Hey, everyone, this is Tracy Hazard on the New Trust Economy, and I'm going to do one of these double episodes again where we're going to talk a little bit about blockchain, where we're going to talk Bitcoin and, and crypto here, but we're also going to talk about podcasting because that is of interest to my center of influence articles that I write for Authority Magazine, and we've got guys who are tripping over into both. So we've got the host of the Bad Crypto Podcast, and it, it kind of started out of you guys being bad boys. So I've got Joel Com and Travis Wright, and you have uh, got 7 million downloads. Is that right? Yeah. Did you say we were tripping? Is that no. <laughs> no, yeah. no, no, no. Yeah. You guys are. That's what we say. Y'all be tripping, tripping over, right? You, you're, oh. you're hit over seven million downloads. Wow. That's actually, you know what? That, that's actually not a bad way to uh, to frame it because I kind of feel like we fell into the space that we're into, uh, and just started with discussions that Travis and I would have on a pretty regular basis. You know, on our our mutual. Uh, interest in cryptocurrency and blockchain. And one day he says, when are we going to do a show? And I said, now. And then that was, you know, that's how we got started. So yeah, about 7 million downloads in just under two years. Well, and you know, and that's great because you guys are for the crypto curious and the crypto serious. You are blockchain blockheads, as you've self-termed, and you like Googling stuff so we don't have to. And we don't, I we don't Google that. anymore. We, we don't, we don't Google, Google anymore. No. We don't Google anymore. Now we're done with Duck, the Go. But um, now you, instead. we like to, we sometimes will Bing, but we don't yeah. Google anymore. We don't Google anymore. <laughs> I love it. I love yeah. it. Down with tyranny. Yeah. We're, po- yeah. we're, post, we're the post Googlers. I absolutely love it. And, and you guys have been, I mean, we're going to talk about this because you guys have some great rankings. You're in a lot of directory listings, um, top podcasts in crypto and other things like that. So we're going to talk a little bit about that. Um, but you, um, you've been doing this podcast. We just talked about it. You've done well over 300 episodes. Um, and you do it in kind of uh, the main uh, the main podcast is 270 at this time, and you've got lots of specials and things that you do. So I want to talk about that as well as we go forward. But because we're starting at the new trust economy, what can people expect from expect from listening to your show? What's so special about you guys? He, he likes red shirts. I like blue shirts. <laughs> I, I, I agree to accept cookies. <laughs> <laughs> Travis is a uh, is a KC fan. I, I, Uh, You know, what makes us special? I think we've both, you know, we've had a long and storied history in internet and in marketing and technology. And so a lot of people that are doing shows about blockchain just come into it from that purely blockchain space. And they, they talk about it, at least they used to talk about it in terms that were over a lot of people's heads. And so, you know, we came around just a couple guys that uh, are technologists and nerds and are fascinated with the stuff, but being professional communicators, we're able to speak in a language that people understand. So maybe that's what makes us special, Travis. Mm-hmm. Well, I think that we're both sort we're, it's not only have we been in social media, but we're also social comedians. At least we think we are. <laughs> we're crypto medians. We're crypto medians. We like to crack jokes. And yeah. so I think that's one of the things that is different than our show is that a lot of the shows, especially when we started, we're just so technical. Everybody's like, oh, rah, 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 rah. you're just going, well, I'm just trying to understand this thing. Well, how do I get started? And they're all like, oh, and then the blog and the shot 256 and the blah, blah, blah. And then people are going, what? And so I think that, that was our part was like, hey, let's come in, let's digest it, make it easy to understand for folks and have some fun in the process. And uh, we're having lots of fun in the process. Hopefully people are understanding it too. Yeah, we're, we're laughing. Whether or not other people laugh at our jokes doesn't matter because we're having a good time. And, you know, people like to be around others who are having fun. And I think that's one of the reasons the show has really resonated is because, hey, you know, I like listening to these guys because 
they just the camaraderie they have and the chemistry uh, in they're just having so much fun and we need more levity we need more humor uh, you know the world and the news and the politics and it's all so serious and we're like why so serious Right. Well, and I think it shows in the way that your, your show comes across. You, you hear it. Um, you guys are having fun. And when you're having fun with something that is being taken a little too techy and serious in other places, um, why not? Why wouldn't want people listen uh, more? And that's why I think you guys have made the top 10 cryptocurrency podcasts you wouldn't want to miss in 2019. And you're both listed as top 100 digital marketers in 2019. Um, congratulations, both of you. And Joel, well, you. you're killing it at number 14. Hmm. Was it with a bullet or am I falling? I <laughs> no, I just, I was shot. I mean, that well, you've gone down from last year. You're starting yeah. to plummet. You know, those <laughs> lists, it, it's always nice to be recognized, but those lists are such BS. Um, I, I guarantee that there's a bunch of people that are listed below me that are far more influential. But uh, hey, if somebody wants to say I'm, you know, number 14, I'll take it. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, so, uh, you know, Pat Flynn fell below you. Uh, John Lee Dumas fell below you. So you got to be feeling pretty good. Johnny, there. step it up. Yeah, Come on. really. It's like, feeling a little ignite, bit Johnny. Ignite. <laughs> yeah. So I, anyway, I love, I love that you guys made that list and, and that you're cranking on that because that list is comprised of, um, and that's Brand 24's list, and it's comprised of mentions about you, mm -hmm. not mentions you make. So like I put out, I, I put out over a thousand podcasts across my different podcasts that we do here. Um, but mentions about you are hard to come by. That means people are talking about you. What do you think that has been the recipe to getting them energized and engaging and talking about you? Mm. I think it's a matter of us being ourselves, right? It's like we don't pretend to be somebody we're not. We even started the show out saying, hey, we're bad right? We're not good. We don't know about blockchain yet, but we know about marketing and we know about technology and we know about emerging technologies. And here's what we've done. And collectively between Joel and I, we've written 16 books, right? Well, Joel's written 15, but it sounds way better when it's, I say 16. That so. sounds good. Yeah. <laughs> don't know so it's much like, about <laughs> history. Oh, yeah. we can do that, Travis. Don't know much cryptography. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's good. Don't know much about blockchain either. All right. So, so it's but, good. Yeah. But you know, it's interesting for something that is a little bit newsworthy, right? You know, things change in the blockchain world, things change in crypto, regulations are shifting, mm -hmm. yet you still on your website recommend that people start from one, from episode one and, and go through it. Why is that? Well, because when we started the show, we didn't know where it was going. We, this is where we were in our journey. And the moment we were going down that rabbit hole was like, hey, you know what? We're not financial advisors. We're definitely not experts. And we've never claimed to be, although we have learned a few things in, in a couple of years. And we said, come on this journey with us. So it's really a great entry point for people that are saying, where do I start? Well, mm -hmm. this is where we started. This is what we've discovered. And so, you know, come down the rabbit hole. Then we, you know, the next episode, what is Bitcoin? What is blockchain, right? What are these, these basic concepts that you want to understand as we're figuring it out? You're going to feel like, oh, these guys are just, I, I can hang with these guys because they're not pretending like they know it all. We're figuring this out together. Well, mm -hmm. you know, it's interesting because I, I, you know, started listening to some of your more recent episodes because I hadn't gone to the website first. I just went to the iTunes. And so went went backwards through it, essentially. And yet you guys were spouting some terms. I was like, whoa, these guys are in the know. So I guess, you know, 300 plus episodes later, you definitely know some stuff. <laughs> I could almost tell you what blockchain is now. Almost. almost. <laughs> I learned a thing or two about a thing or two. Well, one of the things that I think is a great idea about starting from the beginning is then, and you listen to all 350, that just, that just adds a whole lot more listens to our podcast. Yeah, right. and then, and then you you're, like, to you're twice. hooked. Yeah, listen it's, to them twice. It's like, it's better than crack. No, I would say this. So I would say this. You know, go back and listen to like the first, there's a, out of the first 15, there's like 10 that are solid, basic episodes. So we put together a playlist that's badco, B-A-D-C-O dot I-N forward slash basics. And that'll give you the first 10 episodes. If you listen to those, that'll give you a general understanding about blockchain, crypto, mining, wallets, how it all works, why it's important, and what you should know. And that right there, I think, then you can go and start listening to the new episodes and you'll be, you've got an understanding. You don't need to go back and listen to a lot of those old 
old news episodes and stuff. However, there are a lot of really great interviews that we had in there over the past couple of years. So you might want to hit some of those interview sites as well. But listen to those first 10 and that'll get you going. That'll get you going. I love it. So how has this, you know, you started out without a lot of knowledge in the, in the arena, but how has it raised your authority in blockchain and in crypto? Well, we're being asked now to be interviewed on, you know, shows and podcasts to discuss blockchain. We're being asked to go to events, to do bad crypto live on stage, to MC events, to speak about crypto, to do workshops on, you know, crypto basics. And we actually do know, uh, you know, a few things right now, still not claiming to be experts, but we do have a unique ability to make seemingly complex subject matter easy to understand. And I think that's what really positions us uniquely because although there's a lot of people out there that understand crypto better than us, many of them don't have the skills to communicate on a fifth grade level, which is where you really need to be to make Bitcoin and blockchain easy to understand because it took me forever. I, I heard about Bitcoin years ago, Tracy, but I didn't get the whole mining thing. You know, I'm thinking, what are there little men inside my computer going, you know, <laughs> mining, ding, 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 and Bitcoin. I didn't get it because that didn't connect with me. I didn't pursue it. It wasn't until I understood what mining really was that I was able to oh, put all the pieces together. Now I, I get this. Now I've got the foundation. Now we can start from here and begin piling on more knowledge. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I want to piggyback onto that was that was that exact same thing. Once you understand mining, you really understand blockchain. Then you understand why Bitcoin is important because Bitcoin is really the incentive for those independent miners to verify the transactions that's on the Bitcoin blockchain. Once people understand that, you go, ah, okay. So everybody who has Bitcoin on their computers are verifying these transactions. That means we don't need a centralized bank clearinghouse anymore because we're all independently verifying that everything's cool, right? But one of the things that, that, that sort of we took that to another level was is that we've created our own coin, actually, and it's called bad coin. Right. And, and we, I want to talk about that because what, that's one thing is like once you understand mining, you know, I mined some Bitcoin back in 2010 on a laptop and it was fun. You can't mine Bitcoin on a laptop anymore. You can, but you're not going to get any Bitcoin. You're just going to waste like this. That story, Travis, what happened to that Bitcoin? Well, you know, I always, always like to tell the story that I lost the Bitcoin, but I, I mined a Bitcoin block and then, you know, a couple months later, my computer died. I forgot to get the Bitcoin off. I got all my important files off and my photos and whatever, but not the Bitcoin, smart man. So anyways, I lost that. But the important thing is it was cool to mine. I liked it. I was like, oh, I mined. I got some, I got some magical internet money here. This is great. And so we did, you know, we're having some conversations and about a year ago, we said, you know, there's a problem with Bitcoin today because it can only be mined by very powerful, wealthy people who've got huge amounts of technology to be able to mine it now. You gotta have so much hash power and computational power to mine, it's impossible for regular folks to mine. And a gigantic but, AC system. Yeah, no kidding. So what if we flip that arms race on its head and say, let's see if we can get the baddest, the worst computer. Who can mine on bad computers and mine bad coins? And so we created our own coin that's a five uh, algorithm multi-chain that any device can connect to our blockchain and you're going to be able to mine fairly. So if you're connected to the, you know, if you have like a big room of ASIC computers, you're going to be connected to the SHA-256 algorithm. The difficulty will be very high for you to solve the problem. The reward will be lower. If you're using a MacBook or, or PC and you're connecting to the YesScript algorithm, the reward will be much higher and the difficulty will be very low. And so the S script blocks get mined more than the ASIC blocks. And we just got it all sort of, it's still a balancing act of balancing it all out. And we basically created the most fairest mineable coin uh, in blockchain today. Well, I don't know that that deserves to be called bad, but I love it. Um, that, that's amazing. So, you know, this is something really interesting that, you know, too many people who become authorities and experts in the industry don't actually use it. So like we get this point where, where they they, they don't own Bitcoin. They've never, you know, they've never mined anything. They don't really actually know how it works. And that is super interesting that you guys are not only you've been exploring it all the way, but you're diving in. So you're now users. Yeah. 
Yeah. And that's, that's, you know, as technologists, as futurists, as practitioners, we're always saying, Hey, what if we tried this? What if we did that? Could we come up with this? And we, we play, you know, I think uh, Travis and I both look at technology as this, uh, the, the wide open beach with all this sand and like, what can we build here? What kind of castle? We got our pail and shovel and what do we make? What would be mm -hmm. fun? What's going to get washed away with the ocean and what can, you know, stand the test that people will come by and take pictures of it. And, you know, monetary gain that comes with success, you know, automatically. Uh, a lot of people are trying to build something for the money. I think we do the things we do because we know if we do what we love, we're going to, it's going to be fun and the money will come. Yeah, absolutely. Well, so you kind of uh, told me a little, couple little stories here, but I'd love to hear the most interesting or the most funny story related to starting the podcast in particular. Funny story. Like things that went really wrong, things that went just really- Well, the, the show you know, is still around two years later, so that went really wrong. <laughs> yeah, I would, say that I would say the most interesting thing about our s setting up the podcast was that we had the idea, I made the comment to Joel about, hey, how long until we do the Joel and TW Crypto Show? That was at about maybe 3 o'clock on July 16th, 2017. And the morning of, two, of, of July 18th, two days later, like 36 hours later, we like launched the first episode. But not, not just the episode, we had registered the domain, you know, we, we took all the skills that we'd had from our previous experience, right? So we knew about websites, so registering a domain, setting up WordPress, Travis did some, you know, graphic design to create our logos, setting up the social profiles, um, finding the place to record the show, and then I produced the show, found the music, edited it all together, found the podcast platform, boom, got it out. We just took massive Two days action. though, guys, that's Two amazing. <laughs> July 16th, July 18th, the first episode came Boom. out. Yeah. And that, that was so it. We good. were on our way. Massive is, action. Yeah, massive action. Yeah, absolutely. And you guys had some skills, though. And that, that is truly a difference. So, I mean, I think I have 200 podcasters on my Podetize platform. And, um, you know, I think 30 days for most of them is rushing it. Like, it, it, they, they take we much We said, longer. let's go. We were already we having phone calls. It's like, let's just go. Let's go. And you know what? I think that that goes to our backgrounds is like Joel and I each have a background in broadcasting. Like, so he worked at a college radio station. I was at, I was a country music DJ at age 13 to 15 at my mom's, my mom's best friend's dad's radio station, which was the KMAM, KMOE and Butler. And so I think that just, and Joel, I don't know how many podcasts that he's done over the years. And I know that I've done a bunch and we said, let's just go. And one take, here we go, let's rock it. And then maybe a little bit of editing in there, somebody coughs or something. But, you know, the mic's in front of either Joel or I. We're not going to be too shy. We're going to keep talking. Right? What's on our minds. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, look, that. there's the mic. Yeah, there's yeah, the mic. Go. Yeah, I feel it, really it, comfortable here, right? <laughs> yeah, we're both, you know, professional keynote speakers. So, we, you know, and, and Travis is a stand up comedian. I mean, he's sitting right now, but he can also stand and talk and mm -hmm. tell jokes. And so, and Joel you know, was the, a porn star in the 70s. <laughs> I mean, we got a lot. There's a lot of different. Bounce, bounce. Okay, that part is not true. It was the '80s, but it was no, the that's 80s. <laughs> nice. Oh my gosh! So you guys, uh, you guys have probably gotten a lot more speaking events, a lot more keynotes, and other things. Um, but has it increased your business opportunities? Oh gosh! Uh, has always. it hit the bottom line? Yeah. Uh, Any time, I think you resonate with the public. Um, if people start reaching out to you. They want to sponsor the show. I mean, we just we're always getting inquiries every day uh, via email or via LinkedIn or Twitter, and people want to be on the show and wanted to talk about potential joint you know ventures with us or asking us to go speak uh, somewhere where yeah. we never know where we're yeah. going to be. I got asked to have, smoke a joint venture. Yeah, that was good. <laughs> <laughs> it, that happens with Travis. He like he likes the wacky weed, and somehow the people hey, let's that go happen, on a joint adventure. they know that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. they yeah, do happen. That. They do know that with Travis. They find him. The joints find him wherever yeah, we are, and whatever joint we're in, that's they good. find him. Sure. And so, yeah, the bottom line is, I mean, certainly during the 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 timing that we had on starting the show 
was just, it was impeccable. You know, who knew that we were coming in right before the biggest bull run in, uh, in Bitcoin history. We could feel something was happening though, man. It's like, I, you know, cause that was we, gas. Were ha- we were having conversations and it was just, it just consumed like literally cause I had just launched digital sense, my book in, in January. And here we are in July and my book is the farthest thing from my mind. I'm like, man, this crypto world has consumed me. I finally get it. Here we, once you understand blockchain, once you understand, you, you, you get on fire and you're like, oh my God, I got I to gotta know as much as I can. And I think a lot of people were like that and they jumped on and started listening to our show. Yeah, well, you, there wasn't a lot of p- places where you could get information. So, you know, this is the thing. You guys are authors, and that's kind of a common place where people go, let's go read a book about this. But the reality is things were changing too fast for you guys to even gotten a book published in time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and I, I mean, I've done, we, you know, as Travis said, we've done 16 books between us, and it takes a lot of time, and we've talked about doing a, a crypto book, but honestly, by the time it would come to press, even if I – use one of my methods that I can get it out in a few months. Um, it's going to get dated so quickly. I don't know that it's worth it. Yeah, that's how I feel. That's why I still haven't published my books yet. They're still sitting on my credenza back here. Well, well and, <laughs> you know, one of the best reasons for doing a book is for branding, right? And, and authority. And the podcast has given us that already. So I don't know that, you know, that reason that doesn't really hold up. Yeah, absolutely. Well, um, even though this is a new trust economy, I want to hit on the, the things that go into our center of influence article that uh, will be on Authority Magazine and hopefully on BuzzFeed when they pick you up because I'm sure that they will pick up your advice. So we like to hit on five uh, areas um, that we could use some lessons on, tips for. Um, how can you book great guests? Well, you have to ask, Right. That's the first thing. If you want guests, you have to ask and you can't be afraid to ask. Um, Learn a little bit about the people that you're wanting to have on before you ask them so that you can, uh, when you reach out, not just say, hey, I've got a show. Do you want to be on? Talk a little bit about them and what you admire about them and why you would, you know, be interested in having them on. Yeah, absolutely. I love that. How about increased listeners? You know, I think, I think really it's naming your shows in a way that people are searching for things, right? Because they want to find certain pieces of content. So, you know, who is your audience? That's one of the things you really got to know. What kind of content are they looking for? Now, you're going to do content that you're going to put out that's going to be uniquely yours, that's relevant to you and interesting to you. Now, if it's interesting to you and unique to you, there's going to be a tribe of folks out there who probably feel the same about that particular stuff. So just make sure that you do everything in your favor to, to name it correctly so people can find it, right? And also keep in mind that you can take your podcast and convert that into a YouTube episode. You can put that YouTube episode on BitChute. You can put it on DTube. You can put it on Real Video. You can go on Steam It and promote your podcast there. So just think of different places where, where are other people that are going to be listening located at and go connect with your tribe. Absolutely. I love that. How about produce it in a professional way? Now, you guys are doing this yourself still. Well, we actually, we brought on a, an engineer that, um, that takes our, you know, audio now. I'm, we're both very capable of doing it, but it's time consuming. And, uh, and it's just, it's, it's not fun if I have to keep doing that part of it. And so uh, we've got a, a gentleman, Aaron, the tech, who, uh, who produces our programs and puts them out for us. Mm, that's nice to have, right? Is there any tips to how you produce it professionally, though, so that it sounds like a professional show? Have a good microphone. Have a good connection, right? If you're doing a video, make sure you have some decent lighting so it lights you up nicely. I virtual just say, just, backgrounds? You have a back, <laughs> virtual background. Yeah, it just, it's, I mean, we're using Zoom, so Zoom has that built in that you can just have a nice little fancy background there. But I would say, you know, definitely have a good microphone, have a nice system set up, and, uh, you know, Don't be afraid to start learning it. It's, you know, audacity is such an er easy thing to learn to start out with. So if you're just starting out, I know this is my fourth or fifth different podcast series that I've been a part of. And I remember the very first one, I used audacity way back in 2006 to create my Cultivate Greatness podcast, interviewing people and just putting it together. It's like, that's the fun part is, the thing is, is that I realized well over 10 years ago that I want to spend a portion of the rest of my life interviewing people who are smarter than me in areas where I'm not smart in or I'm not an expert in so I can learn from them 
and grow my network and also share that content with other people so that they can learn those lessons. And so I think if you think about it from that perspective, that's not just about you. It's like, oh my God, think of the value I get from interviewing this person, one of my heroes or one of my tech people that I really admire, an author that I really love or some YouTuber that has got my attention or whatever. You start interviewing them and then you become them kind of in a way. It's over time you grow all these unique skills and you stack these skills and next thing you know, you can do all kinds of stuff online. That's right. How about encouraging engagement, seeing you guys have, you know, been on the list of uh, the most engaging people in market in digital marketing? Yeah, well, you have to uh, invite people to engage with you, right? So every show, it's like email us, podcast at gmail.com, engage with us on Twitter. We have a Facebook mastermind group that, you know, we allow people to come in and talk about crypto. We tell them, fill out the contact form. We have a phone number. We say, call us, leave us a message, you know, even if it's Joel just- Joel scratches a... that in bathroom walls. He scratches, <laughs> call us, we're lonely. Yeah. We have stickers, you know, here's a, here's a bad coin sticker. We have bad crypto stickers and we put them places and you know in bad places right because yeah. want people to recognize uh you know in fact that was where i just was uh, travis in uh, in in toronto when i was walking back to the hotel one day somebody had put uh some stickers up on uh, poles that were like about not eating meat and i'm like oh bad crypto podcast boom right there. <laughs> why not right there i love it so how about best ways to monetize a lot of different ways you can monetize a podcast, right? If you have content that's relevant to some particular company, if you are creating content and the inter your audience is relevant to some certain brand, then there's opportunities to do sponsorships. Of course, if you're in the crypto world, then there's always somebody out there trying to get some exposure for something. So, you know, reach out and talk to the people who are trying to do great stuff in your space that so your audience is relevant to them. And maybe there's a fit. Awesome. Well, thank you for those. I really appreciate that. Now, I just want to, before we go, talk a little bit about um, how people can reach you and find you. So besides your show, where else can they find you? What, what social media do you, are you guys active in? And it's you actually there. Yeah. Uh, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. I'm at Joel Com everywhere. Mm -hmm. Awesome. And you? Yeah, I am. I am Travis Wright. You can normally Google me for that. Um, as I know, I normally the official Travis, Wright. There's other, there's actually another Travis, Wright on my street, <laughs> I'm Travis W. Wright, but he's like Travis D. Wright or something. Uh, literally I'm at, I'm at, he's at two houses down, which is crazy. <laughs> we got some mail issues, but online I'm the number one Travis, Wright. So I, he's an imposter. He's <laughs> um, but yeah, you can find me. I'm, I'm a T W T E E D U B Y A normally. Sometimes there's a W at the end because that was what my grandpa called me when I was growing up. Hey, TW. So, <laughs> Love it. Absolutely. Okay, great. And, you know, is there anyone that you haven't been able to get on your show yet that you'd really like to get? Yeah, the Winklevi. Cameron and Tyler Winklevoss, we would love to have uh, either or both of them on. I feel like as a pair, they, you know, they go better, but we'd, we'd be happy with one. Wow, that's really interesting. That that's the first time that one's come up. I get a lot of the same people all the time, right? But wow, that's great. Yeah, we, we, we take Satoshi, know. but there's we don't know. We might have already had Satoshi on, so we don't. You know. don't she even know. Satoshi, she yeah. Toshi. Yeah, <laughs> that's yeah, right. Who who do most people say? I'm curious. Oh, you know, we get a lot of like you know Barack and Michelle Obama, Oprah. You know, the, in the women, we get a lot of Brene Brown and other um other people like that. We've had a few people ask to have Tony Robbins on and kind of right now who wouldn't want to have him on because that'd be a scoop but you know on an ordinary day that's a pretty typical answer yeah no, yes. i'm good yeah i think you know interesting i i mean what would you ask him uh the winkle yeah that's a good question right there what would <laughs> we ask them travis what would your first question be for the winkle how much of a dick is mark zuckerberg <laughs> <laughs> How much do you hate Mark Zuckerberg? Well, that would set the tone uh, for that podcast. They'd be like, "Oh, that's in. good." Well, he's got a, they got their own crypto coming on, which is uh, which is good. So I, I bought a domain name F Zuckbucks. So, the, <laughs> uh, so good for them. Ready yeah. for them to do his crypto. I love that. You know, this I got my anti hashtag campaign already ready. This That's is the great. thing, though. If you had them on, I mean, this is really, it's very curious. I mean, because what are they doing? They're constantly staying ahead of technology. So far yeah. ahead sometimes that they're getting yeah. stolen from, right? I'd like to know about, I'd like to chat with them about like, like the genesis of them understanding crypto because they, they grabbed it at an early time, right? They got, their, they got that fat stack from 
from Zuckerberg and the lawsuit. And then right after that, they put like nine, ten million dollars in crypto when it was like a hundred bucks a pop or maybe even lower. So they were smart. They got in and just kind of talk about where they've been and where they see the road going and they've created their own exchange and they've done it in New York City where it's the hardest place in the world to do any own any crypto trading business. And so they've done a lot of really interesting things. And so it'd be fun to chat with them. Yeah, it would be. So last thing, what, what kind of advice do you have for somebody who wants to start a podcast? Uh, well, have something that you really want to talk about, right? Don't start one just to start one and uh, then take action. Uh, don't hesitate. Like if, if you're really passionate enough about a subject, uh, don't worry about getting it perfect. Just start talking. And uh, if you don't have a team to support you in it, you don't know what else to do. There's a great app available on, um, on the iPhone, maybe on Android as well, called the Anchor app, which lets you create podcasts directly on your phone. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you guys. I really appreciate you coming on today. And I just want to, because this is the new trust economy, is there anything on that side of, of where we're seeing a lot of trust and disrupt, in, in distrust in crypto or in blockchain that you think is kind of dissipating? It's disappearing and we're feeling a lot more confident in how it's going. Mm. You know how everybody back in the day, like, oh, only criminals have crypto, right? <laughs> It seems like that that myth is, is being faded. Back in the day, a lot of the criminals did have crypto. Um, and they still do probably have crypto. Um, but I bet they're probably going, man, how much did I buy that weed for? Twenty. I bought. I spent like $80,000 on, if you figure out the price of Bitcoin now, right? I bet a lot of the criminals are sad that they spent so much money on the dark web, um, <laughs> with all that Bitcoin, if they would have just held it instead. Um, you know, so, Yeah. You know what? One of the things I always we always say is that you know crypto goes up, crypto goes down. The space is changing, but blockchain is not going away. We think it's fascinating. We love it. We're in it, and we're having fun with it. And every day is oh yeah. So I'd say this: blockchain is here to stay. It's not going away. Crypto goes up, crypto goes down. It's all it's all a magical magical roller coaster ride. So just buckle in, have fun, and hold on. That's what I would say. Yeah, I love that. That's kind of our philosophy here at the New Trust Economy too, that, you know, that I'm, I'm personally much more interested because I come out of the innovation and technology side that, you know, much more interested in the use cases that are really showing that viability of what blockchain really means and what it can mm -hmm. do underneath and underlying um, mm -hmm. as a technology. And so when you can see a use case that's coming up, that's like, wow, that shows it to its best ability. That's yeah. what I want to highlight. That's my personal angle here. I really mm -hmm. don't know much about crypto. So on the flip side of that, I'm, I'm kind yeah. of a newbie into the market. So I have That's appreciated good. your podcast to oh, helping yeah. to enlighten me on that side of it. Yeah. One of the things that I see coming along and Joel and I have chat about this is, you know, one of the biggest case studies for crypto and blockchain has been advertising or has been finance. Yeah. Next one is advertising. It's going to totally change the advertising game with that elements of trust built in, click fraud, and all that ad and so we've set up a new website where we're kind of curating some of that news around blockchain advertising and blockchain marketing. And that's the blockchaincmo.com. So we've set that up, blockchaincmo.com. And uh, we're having fun sort of curating that. So that's I'm putting some brain power over there thinking advertising and blockchain, who are going to be the winners over there? Because uh, I want to start connecting with them. Oh, well, then I definitely want to talk to you guys more about that. So we'll, we'll do that at another time, though. So everyone, thank you so much for joining me, Joel and Travis. I really appreciate you guys here. Bad Crypto Podcast, you guys have to check it out. Add it to your subscription list. Um, mm -hmm. If you're listening to blockchain and cryptocurrency, you got to be listening there. So thank you guys mm -hmm. for joining Badcoin me. Badcoin.net also, if you want to learn how to mine Badcoin. Ooh. Oh, see, there you go. Badcoin. Learn how to mine. There you go. And uh, stay bad. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for joining me and thank you all for listening. This has been Tracy Hazard on the new trust economy. You've been listening to the new trust economy. We'd love to hear your comments on today's show, as well as suggestions for future topics and guests. Visit us online at newtrusteconomy.com or on social at new trust economy. Thanks for exploring the new trust economy with us.